In this tutorial, we're going to look a little more at materials in 3ds Max using Arnold. So um, let's go ahead and open up our, our material editor. Um, you can either hit this button here or hit M is the shortcut. And let's go ahead and make a second material. So I'm going to double click uh, again under Arnold here uh, with your materials, Arnold on standard surface. You could also try other ones like Car Paint or um, Lambert, for example. But uh, for now, I'll just do the standard surface. And this is your basic material you're going to want to use for most objects. And some simple things you can change are the color. So if I select this little box here, I can change the color. So let's make this like a hot pink purple. Um, and then you can change, you know, different things like the specular highlights and then other more advanced features, which we won't get into now, but uh, like sheen that you can uh, start playing around with. And once you want to apply it, let's go ahead and select the compressor here. Um, and again, I grouped this earlier, so let's go ahead and turn off our hinge and our owl. And I'll just right uh, select on group here and I'll open it. And that'll allow me to select individual objects within this group. So I'll go ahead and select maybe these two cylinders uh, and then double click on that material, hit the assign material to selection, uh, and that will allow me to apply that purple material to those two objects. When I'm done working, um, on those objects, since it's a group, I can always select one object in the group and then go to Group Close, and it will close that so that it's a closed group once again. So let's go ahead and turn on our hinge. Maybe we'll add a material to this hinge, and then turn off the compressor. Let's open our Material Editor again, and let's create a new standard surface material. So uh, in this case, let's add a texture. Let's add a texture map. Um, and so instead of a color, you'll see these kind of empty slots in all these locations. These are different maps that you can use to create the material. Um, or you can, so you can either select there and, and select a map, or you can just drag from one of these inputs and then select the kind of map you want to use there. So in this case, I'm just going to use a general bitmap. And this will just be any kind of image like JPEGs, TIFFs, anything you could download. We'll just start with this basic wood uh, image. And then I want to make sure that's also applied as the base color. So I'm just going to drag from there uh, and make sure it's also the base color. If I double click on that little preview, it gets a little bigger and you can just see it a little bit better. Uh, but make sure if you have an image, it's applied to both of those slots, which correspond to these slots uh, and are the same slots over here. Um, again, to apply an object, you just can select the object, uh, make sure the material selected. If the material selected, you'll get these double dot dashed lines, or a dashed line around the material, and then you can assign it to the selected object. All right, there's a little more to do, so that worked, that applied it, but there might be you want my, you might want to have more precision over how that map is applied to the object. So one thing that's really critical and really powerful in 3ds Max is the UVW map modifier. So if you select an object you can go to your modifier list and then from the drop down select UV map modifier and I'm applying this to the whole group but you could just apply it to each object it's really up to you and how you're trying to map these objects uh, but you can apply it there so uh, just if I, I for example if I didn't want to apply it to that uh, screw for example I could go to my group I could open it and I could select just the objects that I want to put the wood on and then exclude those but but um, uh, that's for you to decide. So I'm going to go ahead and group close this. And now that I have the UVW map modifier, I need to change some of the settings. Any object that is not just one flat color, one basic color, you want to make sure you apply UVW map modifier to that object. So that's any object with a pattern or a texture or a bitmap. Any of those kind of objects need a UVW map modifier. And so once you apply that, you choose the kind of um, let me go ahead and go to perspective view here. You choose how you want to apply that map to the object. So you can do it as a planar map, but in this case I have a three-dimensional object, so I'll use a box mapping. And then if you go a little further down, um, there's this real-world map size. You always want to make sure that's deselected, so just in case. And now you can see my texture is not really showing up, so you can change the size of the bounding box like you can either hit you know fit down here or you can just change this manually so for example I could go in here and type in 20 feet by 20 feet by 20 feet and you can see the texture starts to shrink depending on the size of that bounding box you can also toggle and drag on these arrows to do it uh, more visually in real time um, that's sort of helpful uh, the other thing you can do is open up the UVW map modifier 
by hitting that arrow, selecting Gizmo, and then you can use your Move, Rotate, and Scale tools and actually move the map without moving the object. So if you have a very specific, like I want the knot right there, you can actually move it so it's right in that location. You can even rotate it. You know, so if you like, you know, you want that there, you can rotate it and you can even scale it. So those are different ways of manipulating how 3ds Max is applying that uh, that texture to the object, and and it's really helpful and really necessary to have the UVW map modifier. Okay, so let's go back to our camera view. Let's go ahead and unhide everything, and um, we can now render that.